Hi, I'm Courtney, and welcome to this lecture on asthma and COPD medications. The NCLEX will test you on which meds to give and when, so let's get into it. Now, before we talk about medications, let's quickly review what asthma and COPD are. Now, asthma is a reversible airway obstruction caused by inflammation and bronchospasm, whereas COPD encompasses both chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Now, these are progressive and not fully reversible. But acute asthma attacks, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema all have some common symptoms. The first being bronchoconstriction, which is narrowing of the airways. The second is airway inflammation, which causes swelling and increased mucus production. Now, both of these symptoms make it much more difficult to get air in and out of the lungs, and that is problematic. So to treat those conditions, we use medications that one, open the airway, and two, reduce inflammation. Let's start with the big picture framework for medications because the NCLEX loves to test rescue versus maintenance medications. So rescue medications are also called relievers and these work fast. These are going to include our SABAs and SAMAs, which open the airway quickly, which is bronchodilation, during acute asthma attacks or COPD exacerbations. Then we have our maintenance medications, also called controllers. These include our LABAs, our LAMAs, our inhaled corticosteroids, and our leukotriene modifiers. These medications are taken every single day to reduce inflammation and prevent bronchospasm. So if the NCLEX gives you a client with sudden wheezing or acute shortness of breath, you're reaching for your rescue medications, not your maintenance medications. Now, before we get into specific medication classes, there are three big considerations for inhaled medications that the NCLEX is going to want you to know. The first is that order of use is really important. So if you're giving two inhalers, make sure to use the bronchodilator first before the inhaled corticosteroid. This is going to make sure that those airways are nice and open so that when you give the inhaled corticosteroid, it can get deeper into the lungs and more effectively reduce inflammation. And remember, if you're using a metered dose inhaler, you want to shake that canister first, then after a full exhale, seal the lips around the inhaler, inhale for five seconds while depressing the canister, hold the breath for 10 seconds, then exhale slowly. Now the timing of when we give these medications is also really important. So if you need to give the same medication again, you can do it one minute later. But if you're giving a dose of a different medication, we need to wait five minutes in between doses. And if your client struggles with the coordination of depressing the canister and inhaling at the same time, we're going to recommend a spacer because this helps deliver more medication into the lungs rather than just the back of the throat. All right, now let's talk about our bronchodilators. And this is going to include our beta agonists. These work by stimulating beta-2 receptors in the lungs, which activates the sympathetic nervous system. That's our fight or flight response. This is going to trigger bronchodilation to open up those tight inflamed airways. However, beta-2 stimulation isn't just limited to the lungs. These medications also activate beta receptors elsewhere in the body, and this causes central nervous system stimulation. So it makes sense that we're going to see side effects like increased blood pressure, palpitations, tremors, insomnia, and even increased blood glucose. So make sure to monitor heart rate and blood pressure and blood sugar, especially if your client is diabetic. Now, beta agonists are split into two groups. We have our short acting or our SABAs and our long acting or our LABAs. Now the SABAs, like albuterol and levalbuterol, are your rescue inhalers. These work really fast to give immediate relief from bronchospasms. So we teach our clients to always carry these with them in case of an acute exacerbation. But if they're using their SABA more than twice a week, this is a red flag that their asthma is not well controlled. And this can be dangerous because too much of a short acting beta agonist can lead to dangerous side effects like tachydysrhythmias, seizures, and rebound bronchospasms. Our LABAs like salmeterol and formoterol are taken daily on a fixed schedule to keep airways open for about 12 hours. These are not rescue medications. However, formoterol, when combined with an inhaled corticosteroid is the exception to this rule. And it can be used for both maintenance and acute relief because it works really quickly. But remember, LABAs should never be used alone in asthma because it increases the risk for asthma related death. Now let's look at our muscarinic antagonists. These are also called anticholinergics and these block parasympathetic stimulation, which reduces bronchospasm and cuts down on mucus production. So we also divide these into two categories. We have our short acting and our long acting medications. Our short acting muscarinic antagonists or SAMAs include ipratropium, which works quickly and can be used for rescue or short term bronchodilation. We also have our long acting muscarinic antagonists like teotropium. These take longer to kick in, but they last up to 24 hours, making them really great for maintenance therapy in COPD and asthma. 
Now, these medications are anticholinergic drugs, which means they can cause anticholinergic side effects like dry mouth. So if the NCLEX asks, encourage your clients to drink fluids and use sugar-free gum or candy to help relieve this side effect. Our last bronchodilator category is our methylxanthines, with theophylline being the classic example of this. Now, theophylline relaxes smooth muscle in the airway to improve airflow, but it's not used much anymore because it has a really narrow therapeutic range. This means the client can quickly develop toxicity, and this starts as nausea and vomiting and can quickly progress to seizures and dangerous arrhythmias. Now, if the NCLEX asks you about theophylline, they're most likely going to ask you about its interaction with caffeine. This is because caffeine inhibits theophylline metabolism, which increases the risk for side effects and toxicity. So we need to teach clients to avoid consuming caffeine while they're taking theophylline. All right, it's time for our first NCLEX quick check. When using two inhalers, which should be used first, our bronchodilator or our corticosteroid? Well, that is going to be our bronchodilator because remember, we want to open those airways up so that the corticosteroid can get deeper into the lungs and more effectively reduce inflammation. How long should you wait between puffs of the same medication? Well, we're going to wait one minute between puffs of the same medication and five minutes between puffs of different medications. Next up, what are three common side effects of a beta agonist like albuterol? Well, remember, beta agonists activate the sympathetic nervous system. So we're going to see side effects like tremors, palpitations, tachycardia, insomnia. And lastly, clients taking theophylline should avoid consuming what? Well, we need to teach them to avoid consuming caffeine because caffeine inhibits the metabolism of theophylline, which is going to increase risk for side effects and toxicity. All right, now let's move on to our anti-inflammatory medications. And first up are going to be our inhaled corticosteroids. This is going to include budesonide and fluticasone. And these medications work by reducing airway inflammation and mucus production, which helps keep the airways open and prevent exacerbations. Now, inhaled corticosteroids are maintenance medications. That means they must be taken daily, even if the client feels fine. These are not rescue inhalers. And here's your big NCLEX tip for this medication. We need to teach clients to rinse their mouth after every use. This is because steroids suppress local immunity. In this case, it's in the mouth and failing to rinse the mouth can put the client at high risk for oral thrush or candidiasis. And remember, if a client is prescribed both an inhaled corticosteroid and a bronchodilator, we always wanna give the bronchodilator first so that those airways are nice and open and the steroid can penetrate deeper and more effectively reduce inflammation. Our last group of medications is our leukotriene inhibitors. This is going to be our Montelukast. This is another medication that is also taken daily, but it works a little bit differently. Montelukast blocks leukotrienes. These are the chemicals in the body that trigger inflammation, bronchoconstriction, and mucus production. So by blocking these leukotrienes, the airways stay open and calm, and this makes it really helpful for preventing asthma-related symptoms, and it's also used for allergic rhinitis. Now, the key word there was prevent. This is a maintenance medication. It is not meant for acute asthma attacks. Now the NCLEX is going to also want you to know that Montelukast can cause psychiatric side effects. So we need to assess clients for mood changes and suicidal thoughts. And if we notice any changes, we need to report that to the healthcare provider right away. All right, it's time for our last NCLEX quick check. The nurse should teach the client to do what after using an inhaled corticosteroid? Well, remember, we need to teach them to rinse their mouth. This helps prevent oral thrush because this is a steroid and it's going to suppress the local immunity in the mouth, which is going to put the client at higher risk for opportunistic infections like candidiasis. And last up, clients taking Montelukast should be monitored for what? Well, remember we said Montelukast can cause psychiatric side effects, so we need to monitor for any changes in mood or suicidal thoughts. And if we notice any changes, we need to report these to the healthcare provider right away. All right, you are all set for asthma and COPD medications on the NCLEX. Thank you so much for joining me.